It has been a long week, so let's get into some late night questions from subscribers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got a made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. So YouTube team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And excuse me if I am extra black right now because me and Carter, my wife, we just spent like five six hours at the pool today was just a super chill day a super relaxed day i hope y'all having a real good day i hope y'all had a great week and just hope that everything is going good this has been a very eventful week especially for one lamar jackson with the media uh but it's all good it's all part of the game man anyway i love y'all team keep it clean uh shout out to all the patrons um shout out to everybody thank you for supporting thank you for being willing to support uh, thank you for positivity. Thank you for supporting other people, too. I've been just seeing such a widespread of support, not just on here, but just on Ravens YouTube, period. Different Ravens YouTubers working with each other, even Ravens YouTubers working with writers who don't even do YouTube, but having them come on a channel and stuff. Special shout out uh, to Huddle It Up Films. Uh, my guy Jason, uh, and I'm sure y'all are very familiar with him, but he has been grinding. Shout out to Cole Jackson, because he has been grinding. So, man, and of course, you already know, keeping it real, uh, my boy Jose Verdusco. Of course, Sonny SCG Sports. Uh, it's just, and, and I, I could keep going on. I know my guy Kevin Redline, my guy Jermaine, my guy Coach. I, I could go on forever, of course, simply because it's certain. It's like every time I want to stop, I don't want to leave anybody out. I don't want to leave anybody out. But I'm going to stop there. And I'm not stopping there because I'm leaving. I'm, just, I'm stopping there just because we could go on this list forever. But anyway, I'm just happy for everybody. I'm glad for everybody. I'm glad everybody's like things are just moving right now. Shout out to my guy, Keeping It Real. He got his studio now. And he's in the beginning stages, but you can already tell the way that it's going. It's going, it's going to be nice, man. It's going to be nice. And I, I'm, I'm just happy for them, man. Simply, of course, continuing to do his thing with all the crazy edits. You already know how that goes. Um, and I'm going to stop because I, I could get into everybody's story and how proud I am of them. Um, but we would be here literally like forever. So all y'all Ravens YouTubers, I love y'all. I, I really do. And, and I'm super happy that everybody's eating but anyway let's get into these questions first question on this episode <laughs> good timing too because this came from my guy raven pride he said what's up engraving this your boy raven pride before i give you my response on shay shay shannon sharp i first would like to say hope you and your family are doing well i cannot forget pookie and myself and gypsy that's his dog my dog which is a siberian husky hope pookie's doing fine oh yeah she's good she's she's doing great um he said I, I hope you enjoyed that video of gypsy when i asked her if she's a steelers fan well oh yeah i did man his his dog like when he asked his dog if she was a steelers fan and she like started crying and she started like looking all ashamed and stuff so she is no steelers fan anyway he said to, to my response as we know that lamar jackson's mom is his agent uh his manager and his liaison uh what we see lamar jackson doing is something that uh, was engraven in him by his mother uh, I, I see what you did there was engraved in him but I, I okay a little wordplay right there i like that i always appreciate good wordplay anyway he said she which i do believe has mentioned several times to lamar that no matter how great you have become always remember that it's a gift from god uh, and please never forget where you come from my point i'm making is that lamar goes about his day not worrying if he's going to get hurt or what people may say about his daily routine he is a young man just being himself and he knows that because his mother has told him what lamar is doing now uh is how he was loved by his mom and he wants to show any kid that no matter what i have become this huge icon i'm here for you and beside you with that being said if anyone would or was what ifing lamar about getting hurt don't you think his mother would have told him to stop? Because as we know, if mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. P.S. That comparison to Lamar was Shannon having a moment like Josh Gordon fiending for weed is like Shannon fiending for his grandma country butter cornbread. Oof, okay. Well, um, well, yeah, Lamar Jackson was, uh, he was certainly raised uh, the right way. And, and you can, e even from us who are not up close and personal with Lamar Jackson, uh, you can tell that he was raised the right, right way when you hear responses that he has to different questions and how he engages with people and how he speaks to people. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. 
and just the way that he carries himself uh you could tell that his he has a very very respectful uh, and, and a certain uh aspect of respect about him and that's something that i certainly appreciate now with the whole thing with shannon sharp um it's <sighs> shannon sharp he he was a little upset he got a little upset one once <laughs> I know y'all saw on First Take or Undisputed, whatever the show is, I, I forget which one it is with him and Skip, with how how he responded when he was reading. <laughs> how he was responding when he was reading the Lamar tweet, and he was like, um, "Okay, that, that's fine. I, I I just won't give advice then. I I, I just I should keep I should have kept my mouth shut. Skip, I should have kept my mouth shut." And I'm like, <laughs> I just laughing, man, because you you could tell he he was like, "Do you? Do you, bro?" Do you? Yeah, you know when somebody say something like that, you know they like super upset. Now, um, with this whole thing, and, and this hopefully this will be the last time we talk about Shannon Sharp with this whole thing. Uh again, we we all understand. Like it, it's been it seems like with Lamar, and I know I think uh Ra Raven Ravens for dummies. Uh Spencer, last night on him and uh Jake Locke's podcast, man. Uh be more beat down. Last night on that podcast, Spencer, I think it was Spencer, maybe it was Jake that said it, I believe it was Spencer. But anyway, last night on that podcast, they made a really good point about how with Lamar Jackson, he, his name, not him, but his name can be so divisive. And what he meant when he said that is that any subject, any topic, anything that's about Lamar Jackson, a lot of people can be like, some people will be on the red side, some people could be on the blue side. Not not the West Side, Red and Blue Side. Not, not that I ain't talking about that. But somebody, people are gonna be on one side or another, and a lot of that's why I always say, and I mean this with Team Keep It Clean. I appreciate when if if y'all don't agree with me, fine. That I I don't care. I don't mind that you don't agree with what I say. But as long as you share how you feel respectfully, that's that's the only thing that I care about. That's it. And with, but with Lamar Jackson. So a lot of people, they tend to get disrespectful and it can just cause, it just seems like it's just all this friction and all this and all this, oh, and it's just all this back and forth. And there's nothing wrong with a healthy debate or healthy conversation or whatnot. But with Lamar Jack, boy, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be striking some, that, he, that, that presses some buttons for a lot of people. Um, and it, it was no different with this whole thing. Me. Again, the way I feel about it, I, I, I understand. I understand that people are like, hey, man, oh, no, Lamar, he's, he's risking this and that. And, oh, man, he could possibly get hurt. Yeah, he could. But this is why I always talk about the media is so powerful. They are so powerful. Because those videos of Lamar Jackson... They were out on Sunday, and they were out on Monday. I did not see not one fan tripping about anything, nothing. And again, I don't, I don't have all the eyes in the world, so maybe there was somebody, but I didn't hear a peep out of anybody saying anything. Oh, Lamar should have been the, nope. Oh, Lamar should have been the, nope. I didn't hear anything. But Pro Football Talk, Mike Florio from Pro Football Talk, he said what he had to say. Then Shannon Sharp and Skip, they said what they had to say. And then that got a lot of fans like, oh, man. And, and again, not that they were wrong, but with a lot of fans, not just of the Ravens, but just football fans, period. A lot of them think, OK, since this guy on TV said this, since this guy with the blue check mark said that. That's exactly what it is. That's right. That's the only thing that it is. Okay, I agree. And I think that way too. And that's that's the sad part of the media, man. That's one of the worst parts about the media when it comes to Lamar Jackson. Now, uh, I have seen a lot of people say, "Oh man, he should have just he should have just played all-time quarterback." And you know like just to back it up a little bit too. There were people tripping about him playing football on a basketball court. Now, had, like if he was doing it in the slides, that'd be one thing. But he had on Jordans. I don't know which number Jordans they are, cause I ain't in the shoes like that. Um, shout out to my guy Sick Kicks, but cause he will know. 
Um, but anyway, he had on Jordans and he was over there mossing the kids and stuff, jumping up, reaching. I said, okay, Lamar, I see you. But if if you like, you don't even have to have grown up in like uh, the, the worst neighborhoods to have done that too. We've all, anybody that's ever played street football, please tell me you, you never played on a basketball court. You, ha you have, have to have done that. And, and it's just, it, it wasn't a big deal. And now back to what I was saying earlier about, there were some people saying, oh, he should have been all-time quarterback. He should have been all-time quarterback. I guarantee you, I guarantee you that if he would have been all-time quarterback, that there still would have been complaints. Still would have been complaints. Because I know some people try to use that as their reason. Oh, well, if he would have just played all-time quarterback instead of playing cornerback and wide receiver, then that would have been straight. No, because once a lot of people saw the media start complaining, they would have followed suit and been like, oh, man, see, he shouldn't be playing quarterback for those kids. Shouldn't be doing that. He could get hurt. He could throw out. What's the point of throwing to these kids? You, you, you could throw out a shoulder or something, throwing to the kids. There would have definitely been something. I guarantee it. Because with Lamar Jackson, no matter what. And I, I've seen so many comments that they, they get it. People understand. They're like, man, why is the media, the media, the media, the media, the media? My guy, lunch break, hot take. My guy keeping it real. They just had live streams on this issue on, like a couple days ago about the media's obsession with Lamar Jackson. But some people in the comment section, they talked about, and again, like I said, the, the, these people get it. They say, man, it's crazy how the media, Lamar is doing something positive. He's doing something positive. And the media is like, oh, oh, that's Lamar Jackson. Okay. Let's, we, we got to put a negative spin on this thing. We got to. We got to. And I know Shannon Sharp in his, in I think today's episode of, again, the first take of Undisputed, whichever show it is, he showed, he was like, see, what Aaron Donald did, that's what he should be doing. That's what Lamar should have done. What Aaron Donald did. With how Aaron Donald had a camp, and he was like, Aaron Donald wasn't out there playing with the kids. He was just talking to them, teaching them stuff. And he was, and, and there was even a kid that was like, oh, Cause Aaron, he was like, where you get them shoes from? And Aaron Donald was like, oh, Nike made them. And the kid was like, oh man, I want to be like you when I grow up. Well, I want to be as good as you when I grow up, something like that. And Aaron Donald was like, oh, you'll be better. It's a, it looked like a little McDonald's commercial or something. But it was cool. I appreciated that. But the, the whole thing of, oh, what if? Oh, this could happen. We, we all know what could happen. We all know the what ifs about what could happen to anybody. We know that. But again, it's like, and, and there was somebody else who commented, like, they, they feel like people, just because they buy tickets, just because they may be PSL holders, just because they may be Ravens fans, that these people should dictate the way that Lamar Jackson lives his life. And think about this. Think about this. We're fans of the game. We're fans of the NFL, fans of the Ravens. Fans of football. But there's so many people getting upset at something that did not happen. There's so many people getting upset and getting all in their feelings and getting all tight about something that did not happen. Something that could have happened. But they're getting upset about something that did not happen. Something that could have possibly happened. But they're getting upset about something that did not happen. Something else that I've seen and something else that we've all seen. We know how the me media and a, a lot of fans, they follow suit when it comes to the media. Again, they like, oh, the media said it, so it's got to be right. We know how the media has portrayed Lamar Jackson, too. They've been saying from jump, he runs too much. He takes too many hits. That play style will not last. You heard those before? Yes, I know you have. <laughs> I know you have. But, it's, and it's like every year Lamar continues to do his thing. Every year Lamar continues to be healthy. And, but, but with that, my point when I say that is that a lot of these media people, 
And then it's turned to a lot of fans too, unfortunately. It's, it's, it's just nasty sometimes. But a lot of these people continue to hope, continue to wish, continue to really just be like, oh, man. They, they want him to get hurt. They want him to get hurt so they can be like, oh, see, I told you so. See, I told you so. And it seems like that's what's been the, the, the root of this whole thing. So people can say, oh, see, I told you so. I told you. Now, I did see a comment, too, with how somebody was like, oh, man, now people are complaining that he's playing wide receiver and cornerback, that he's playing these other positions besides quarterback. But that's exactly what y'all wanted him to do. <laughs> mm -mm. Man. Y'all like... I saw so many points. And then somebody brought out yesterday, because I know that there's been a talk, oh, if Lamar got hurt, then the Ravens, they wouldn't pay him. What? You, if you think, what? Really? <laughs> that couldn't be further from the truth. Now, with Lamar, if Lamar Jackson were to get hurt, he would still cash out. He wouldn't cash out this year. He will cash out next year. Again, remember Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott. Now, Lamar is not on a franchise tag. But Lamar's impact on the Ravens is bigger than Dak Prescott's on the Cowboys. And Dak Prescott got a huge contract. Record-breaking contract. But then, my thing, which was even better, I was like, oh, man. Great points. Somebody in the comment section, I wish I remember who their name was. I, I really do. My apologies. But somebody in the comment section brought out a really, really great point. When they said that with the Ravens, remember Joe Flacco, he came off the, uh, the ACL injury? What happened the following year? They re-signed him to another big deal. They gave him that huge bonus, and then he became the highest paid quarterback in the league for the second time. After coming off an AC, after coming off an AC, after coming off an ACL injury. Tavon Young, who the Ravens love, they drafted him, but he has dealt with injuries for the entirety of his career. What did Eric DaCosta do? I'm, I'm going to give you an extension. I'm going to give you a contract extension, Tay-Tay. And he's dealt with multiple injuries. Multiple. He still got his bread. And there are other examples that we could use. But my point with that is that Lamar is going to get his bread regardless. Now, I don't expect him to get hurt. I don't want him to get hurt. Y'all already know. But Lamar Jackson is going to get his bread regardless. Now, my guy Raven C., my guy Raven C brought up something that I thought was like very interesting. And I was like, shout out to my guy Raven C. Y'all check out his YouTube channel too, man. Boy, Raven, Raven's probably got the best YouTube lineup ever. But anyway, my guy Raven C, he put out a short on this uh, yesterday. He said, what if, <laughs> oh, and ooh, it would be so good. He said, what if Lamar Jackson already signed his contract? He said he doesn't have an agent, so the agent wouldn't leak it. So it would just be between the Ravens, who you know, they know how to keep a secret. Man. You know them Ravens know how to keep a, <laughs> You know them Ravens know how to keep a secret. And Lamar, and, and those pressers from about a month and change ago, Lamar would be like dropping little hints here and there. But hey, who knows? But anyway, if he's already signed his big deal, and he could just be looking back, laughing. Eric DeCosta could just be looking back, laughing. Harbaugh could be looking back like, hey, Lamar, you know we put people on injury reserve for a sneeze. Don't play with me, LJ. Nah, just playing though. But what if? What if he did? What if he did? Oh, but I man. Yeah. <laughs> Ravens, they ooh, they ooh, they they Ravens better not sign Lamar Jackson to a deal before training camp like they said they want to. Ooh, so, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm gonna be petty for that one. Oh, I'm going to be so petty for that one. Oh, man. Oh, they, oh, they, oh y'all better hope they don't. Well, those of y'all that be hating on Lamar. I know a lot. It's a lot of y'all, man. A lot of y'all. 
And some people are, oh, I'm not hating on Lamar. I just don't wish him any success. I just don't like his play style. It's not for me. It's not a good fit. It's not going to be a But now, it ain't nothing wrong if you don't like Lamar's play style. It, everything ain't for everybody. But I, I see people. I see people. Every time they speak about Lamar Jackson, it's negativity. And I'm not saying that every, every. I'm not saying everything you have to say about somebody has to be positive. Well, not even that it has to be positive, but that again, like, he's not above criticism because we criticize him on here too. We talk about the good and the bad, but I see these people that they only talk bad. And that's it. That's it. And then when Lamar does something good, they oh no, that's not no, that's really not that good. Remember Lamar Jackson bought the uh, the Rolexes for the offensive line. Like, oh cool, nice gesture by Lamar. Okay, cool. That was that was real nice of you. It's better to give than receive. Cool. Oh, he shouldn't be doing that with his money. Huh. Hmm. What you pocket watching him for? What you pocket watching his bread for? Like that's that's going into your bank account or something. Like you got direct deposit from Lamar Jackson's checks. Let that man spend his money the way he's gonna spend his money. He's obviously a businessman. Yeah, he be getting ready to get paid a lot of money. He got his brand deals. He's got his clothing line. He just sued he sued somebody a couple months ago for using his likeness without his permission. So uh, yeah, they they got they got. I'm sure they got that thing handled. I'm sure they do. But um, it, it's people that know. Uh, I told y'all, I've been saying this since 2000, since Lamar came on the scene, man. Nothing he ever does will be good enough for some people. Lamar Jackson could go out there week one. He could throw 10 touchdowns. No interceptions. Perfect QB rating. Perfect QBR. All that good stuff. 10 touchdowns. He could throw 10 touchdowns to 10 different receivers. Somebody will say, oh. It's because that secondary was weak. Lamar Jackson could go off where he passes for 200 yards, rushes for 100 yards. He throws like three, four touchdowns, rushes for one, two touchdowns. Somebody say he ran too much. He didn't pass the ball enough. Why didn't he get 300 yards? Y'all know, y'all seen it before, man. Y'all already know what I'm talking about, man, because y'all see it all the time, man. We see it all the time. So it's just, it's unfortunate. Again, not saying that Lamar is above criticism because he is not. Nobody is. But it's a difference, huge difference between criticism and hate. And some people try to mix in the two. Like, oh, no, man, what, what are you Raven fans getting so upset for? What, what are you getting so upset for, Engraven? Why are you getting so mad for, Engraven? Well, it's, just, it's just a little bit of criticism. It's just a little bit of criticism. You can always tell the difference. You can tell by the wording of people's comments, the wording of people's tweets, the wording of people's sentences. You can always tell the difference. It's a clear, especially with Lamar Jackson, it's a clear difference between criticism and hate. Clear difference. And it is not close. It's not. It's not. But it is what it is. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Shout out to Graven.